Uh, as we move into the month of, of September, you'll notice the theme is ruined for normal. And I love this theme. You know, when I became a believer uh, some 30 something years ago, I was ruined for normal. In other words, I hate the word normal and I hate the word average. I, I think that we have got to get away from what's normal in society. You know what? Society thinks they should live for themselves. No, but God wants us to live for somebody else. Well, the ruin for normal. Normal is that you, you get enough stuff and get enough things happening that you're all happy. But in the kingdom of God, it's not about just being happy. It's about making a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I've been ruined. I, and even at 61 years of age, I am not going to grow old gracefully. I am ruined for normal. I, I'm going to preach till I can't preach anymore. I'm going to pray. I'm going to encourage. I'm going to develop people. I, I'm not going to go out gracefully to old age. I hate average, I hate normal. We are called to bigger things than average. We are ruined for normal. As a matter of fact, a few weeks ago, I was on a surf trip in Lombok, in Indonesia. At 61, your senior pastor, 61 years of age, taking on the waves, just looking at the screen, having a couple of the shots. I still got the moves at 61 years of age. We're taking on the big surf, it was all go. I'm booked in again next year because I'm going to do it as long as I can. Because one day it's not going to be there. So I'm going to do it as long as I can. I, I'm ruined for normal. I, I don't want to live normal. I don't want to be like, I don't see success in the world around me as God sees success. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be mediocre. I want to be the person that God's called me to be. And that's not average and it's not normal. So tonight we're going to speak to the subject of not being normal. And it says this, the title is, Big Lives Make a Big Difference. Big lives make a big difference. Everything about God is big. Well, number one, He lives outside of time. That's big. He doesn't do things in small measures. We've got planets that are pretty big. Then we've got suns and stars bigger. We've got galaxies and universes. You know what? They keep making bigger telescopes and you know, they're trying to find the end of this thing, but be assured. The, 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 world, the Bible says that God spoke and the world came into existence. And until God shuts up, they'll never find the end of any universe. Because God's gonna keep creating. God is a God of big things. As a matter of fact, they've found so many new big stars and planets that Pluto is too small. It's being kicked out of the planet range. So God starts, but in saying everything's big, God starts with the small. Uh, he starts with a, uh, a little bit of dust and He creates humankind. He, he create, speaks a word and it starts to create the universe. Uh, uh, the faith the size of a mustard seed is all God needs. Uh, a prayer, uh, 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 a couple of fish and a loaf of bread. But what always starts small always ends up big in God. Influential, life-changing. And once you realise that you are on the planet for a bigger purpose than yourself, once you realise that, when that becomes a revelation, then you know you can't stay small. You've got to become bigger to outwork and encompass the plan that God has for our lives. God wants us to live big lives. Everybody say big, big. But didn't Jesus say, whoever desires to become great, let him become a servant? Doesn't that infer that Jesus doesn't want us to be great? No, on the contrary. When Jesus said to be a servant, He wasn't going against greatness. He was actually describing the pathway to greatness. That the pathway to greatness is to serve all, to serve our generation, to serve the people around us. God has big plans for our lives. And great news is not just built around who you are, it's also built around who He is. You know, I never grew up as a self-confident person, but I want to tell you, when I found God, I, I became a very God-confident person. So my confidence is not about who I am. My confidence is about who He is and who I belong to. And I can stand strong in that confidence. I, I'm not timid. I, I don't pull away from things. I know who He is. Greater is He that's in me than He that's in the world. It's knowing that you have got Him on your side. Look what Romans chapter 12, verse three says. It says, for I say through the grace given to me here that everyone who is among you, you not to think of himself 
more highly than you ought to think, but think soberly as God has dealt each a measure of faith. It does not say, do not think highly of yourself. It just says, don't think highly than you ought. In other words, don't become a legend in your own lunchbox. But know that He's given each one a measure of faith. Think accurately, soberly. We all have gifts and talents and a calling. They're all incredibly different. Uh, uh, I don't know who the, the guy at the end was singing. What's his name? Dan. What a singer. What a legend. What a voice. Dan, when you went for in that song, man, I just had goosebumps all over me. You know, I, I, we've all got different parts to play in this but we're all called to something. We've all been given a measure of faith. It doesn't, it doesn't say, don't think highly of yourself. Don't think more highly than you ought. Yeah. In other words, know who you are. Know the part you play. And the call of God on you is just as important as the call is on somebody else. And don't have a low opinion. Don't, don't think more highly than you ought. Don't think more lowly than you ought as well. Have a, have a sense of sober reckoning of the, the design that God made you to be. And all the designs are good. On the back of your soul is a tag. It doesn't say made in Hong Kong, China or Detroit. It says made in heaven. That's how God developed us to be. We are not accidents or mistakes. We are different on purpose. Don't have a low opinion. Do you know, Jesus walked the earth. He had a really, really good self-image. He, 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 he walked around saying, hey, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's a fairly, high, pretty, you know, like God confident image right there. Paul, the great apostle, he said, imitate me if you want the best out of your life. These people weren't showing off. They were understanding the power it is to have the correct idea of who they are in God. God wants us to live big lives. Big lives make a difference. And even though this is God's plan, when you start to step out to be a bigger person, to do more for the Kingdom of God, don't think everybody gets excited for you. There are always many people who want to pull you down to their level because you start to intimidate them now with their, their averageness, their mediocrity, their normalness, and people can start to stand up against you. Remember the illustration or the story in the Old Testament of, of David uh, about to face Goliath and his older brother, Elihab. Man, he, man, he gets angry at David. Who do you think you are? Okay, all David says, you know what? I'm going to take on the uncircumcised giant here. And his brother says, who do you think you are? Be assured when you step up, not everybody steps out with you. But who remembers Elihab? Nobody. We all remember David, the giant killer. Not everybody stands with you, but we step out anyway. So tonight, I want to look at five ways to help you become a bigger person. Five ways that will take you from where you are to the next place God has for you. Number one is become a bigger person. And that doesn't mean you go to McDonald's more often. No, no, six hamburgers is enough, I'm good. No, it doesn't mean that. Let's have a look at Isaiah chapter 54, verses two and three. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Or habited. You know, uh, so what's God saying? He says, get bigger, man, enlarge, stretch. This all relates to becoming a bigger person, bigger in our wisdom. To be, you know, like wisdom is such a significant part of being a victorious believer. Wisdom is what you fight the unforeseen enemies of your future with. It, it takes away some of the things. Some people blame the devil, but often what we lead into mess is due to a lack of wisdom. Bigness relates to knowledge, to know more things, capacity to get stronger spiritually, not staying the same. It's about learning, developing, taking on more, being in part of what God's doing. Uh, Jesus said, man, go to the secret place with God and He'll reward you in the open places. It's about getting in that spot where God makes us bigger and stronger. Greatness comes by taking on what the average person is trying to avoid. Greatness comes by taking on. See, when, if you wanna get stronger, you don't have to do less work, you've actually gotta do more work. Now, if you wanna get fitter, you don't do less work. If you wanna get, uh, break tiredness, do more work, not less work. The more you do, the stronger you become. And it's the same in the spiritual. Pursue people 
and information that can take you into your future. That's why we've got Dave Hodgman down tomorrow night. Uh, there are people that have been before us that can help us go on our journey. Pursue people and information that can move you forward. If you're the smartest person in your group, you need to find another group. It's great to be the top dog in a little puddle, but I wanna tell you, it's better to get around people that can help you move to the next place God has for you. And it's never about what you're not. It's never about what you're not. It's about what you do with what you have. It's not about looking at that person and saying, man, I wish, if, I was, if I was born like him, if I was built like him, if I was as smart as him, if I'd had the university degree, never about that. I, I've been around enough people to look at and go, you know what? It's not what you haven't got that makes a difference. It's what you do with what you have got that makes a difference. And the people that break through and make it to another level don't complain about what they don't have. They see what they do have and know it's a seed and a seed is enough to produce a harvest. There's this, uh, a story in the Bible Jesus uses where He gives um, uh, some guys five talents, one guy five talents, one guy two talents, and one guy one talent, and talent representing money. And He went away, He says, invest it, I wanna come back for return. The guy that has five invests it, ends up with 10. The guy with two invests it, ends up with four. Now the guy that had one had a really bad attitude. He didn't believe the master was worth any more money. Uh, and, and so he just hid it in the ground. And when the master got back, he said to the guy with five and now had 10, well done, good and faithful servant. The guy with two ends up with four talents. He said, hey, well done, good and faithful servant. The guy with one, he didn't lose it, didn't break it, and he didn't steal it, but he was called a wicked servant. So be assured, biblically speaking, when we use the word faithful, what God is saying is be fruitful, all right? Faithful doesn't mean you just show up. Faithful means that what God has given you, you've done something with it. The guy with five ends up with 10, the guy with two ends up with four. He goes to the guy with the one and he takes it off him. He doesn't even feel, he doesn't say, you know, like you poor thing, no, just keep it. He says, you know what, he gives it to the one who has 10. Be, a God, be assured, God does not believe in socialism or communism. God is a God that rewards investment. He rewards people that do something with what they have. And, and what happens in life really is that opportunities aren't lost, they're just given to somebody else who's getting bigger. They're not lost, they're just going to somebody else that's getting bigger. So become a bigger person. Number two, live in a bigger world. Matthew 16 verse 25 says this, For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You know what I find? People that try and save their life, what, what people do, they, they don't consciously think about it, but people don't like to fly because they're scared the plane might crash. All right, so don't fly. So they're, they're fearful, so they're trying to save their life, but they never, they never leave Brisbane. So what's happened, they've actually lost their life. They're just stuck. People that have fear stop them are trying to save their life. People don't give an offerings tonight. You know why? Because they're trying to save their life. They're trying to think, if I give you that, I won't have anything with McDonald's afterwards. I, I won't be able to go to Target this week and, and, and buy that. And they're trying to save their lives. But the Bible says if you try and save your life, you're going to lose your life. But it says if you lose your life for His sake, you'll actually find the life you've always wanted. An incredible complexity of, of what we see as normal. Normal is save your life. Don't do that. It's risky. God says, take a risk. Walk by faith. See, the miracles of God don't happen inside your boat of mediocrity. They happen when you step out of your boat of mediocrity onto the waters of life. That's where the miracles take place. Out of your boat of fear, out of your boat of normal, that's where the miracles of God take place. Become a bigger person. Live in a bigger world. Get to know somebody that you never would or ordinarily relate to. Get to know somebody that's so out of your world, you'll be surprised. Study something you know nothing about, just for the sake of increasing who you are. Experience another culture. Go on a missions trip. Schoolies is a missions trip. Cambodia is a missions trip. I, I tell the, the, our morning service, because a lot of them are a bit older, and they all go on cruises, and I tell them, go on the missions trip before the cruise. Because the difference between a cruise and a missions trip is what side of the island they land on. That's the difference between a cruise and a missions trip, what side of the island they land on. Experience another culture. I went to um, 
India in 1993. And uh, to this day, I, I had an experience, uh, uh, something I, I saw hell, I felt hell, I smelt hell. I, I went to the Madras railway station in 1993. Uh, there were beggars on the street, people had leprosy. People try, kept trying to sell me their babies. Uh, people were mad, they were insane, they had no clothes on. Uh, they, they, people were going to the toilet everywhere. And to me, as I, I looked at this experience, there were just so many of them. To me, it was a picture of a world without God. It was like, this is, a, this is hell, this is, this is life without God. It was crazy. But every time you go outside of your world, you start to realise how big the world really is. And it gives you a bigger perception of the world that we live in. And the bigger you become, uh, the bigger world you live in, the bigger you become as a person. Help somebody less fortunate than yourself. Get around bigger people. The bigger world you live in, the bigger you become as a person. If you don't do it, it will never happen. Write that down, it's for somebody tonight. If you don't do it, I'm putting it off, I'm putting it off. No, if you don't do it, it never happens. Book it in, get it done. Oh, I can't afford it. We'll make a plan to afford it. Make a plan. People in the mirror. I, I, and I, when I go to the States, I, I speak like this. G'day. How you going, mate? Because Americans love that. That'll get you to the front of the lines. That'll get you free food, free movie tickets. You're just going to say g'day. Oh, you're from Australia. Yep. You're right, mate. Oh, come with us, we'll get you in. All right, then. all right, thanks, champ. <laughs> I never speak like that over here. It's never g'day, it's hi. But in America, it's always g'day. And they say, we love Australia. Isn't that near Germany? <laughs> and they'll say, no, we, uh, we've always wanted to go to Australia. And I, might, I always say, well, why don't you? Oh, there's a thought. They think for a minute, oh, I can't, well, I can't afford it. And I say, you know what? If you put a plan together right now in two years' time, you can afford to come to Australia. If you don't do it, it never happens. Live in a bigger world than you're living in right now. Expand your horizon. Start to see things from a different perspective. Third thing tonight is help others become bigger. Help others. Second Timothy chapter two. Verses one and two says this. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful people who will be able to teach others also. One of the key ingredients of growing stronger as a believer and growing bigger as a believer is to help somebody else become bigger and stronger. It's a key growth of growth is to continually commit to making other people bigger. We call it discipleship. Helping somebody else become bigger never diminishes you. It never makes you smaller when other people become bigger. People get scared. And, and, and to do that, you've got to not be intimidated by people being better than you. <laughs> you know, scared people. I watch leaders and pastors around the country keep small congregations because they get big people around them and they, can't, they get intimidated by them. You see, what you need to know is if you want to be a great leader, you want to build others better and bigger than who you are. You want to be able, and you want to be honestly be able to applaud their successes. Not look at them and go, how the heck did he get that? But praise God, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well done. Congratulations. Man, commit to making other people bigger, stronger, and better. Many people stop growing in their Christian walk. Listen to this. Many people stop growing in their Christian walk because they stop helping, helping others become bigger. As Christians, while we have breath in our lungs, we should have our hands on somebody else's life. It's what we're called to do to help them become bigger. The fourth thing tonight to become bigger is decide, determine to make a bigger splash that your life splashes over, that it, that it makes a difference. We, 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 we don't, we're not after, you know, like 10 nice dives. We're after bomb dives, right? We want the biggest splash you can make. I remember a beer, a, a beer ad a number of years ago, and beer ads are always good because they've got good budgets. And um, uh, 
And I remember this girl sitting in a spa, a big bath, and of course the fan was on to winds blowing her hair inside. And, um, and, it's, and there's all these candles and incense, and she's got the music like just relaxing in this beautiful big bath. And then you see this guy come into this huge bomb dive right in the middle of the bathtub. Water goes everywhere, hair sitting all over her face. All the candles and incense have been knocked over. Then you see him pop up and she is angry. He goes, what? That's the sort of dives we want to do in life. Noticeable dives. That we're not, we are trying to make a splash. We're trying to make a difference. And, and I'll tell you how you splash. The only reason you can splash is when you're full. You've got to be full of it to splash. Some of you are full of it. But whatever you're full of, you splash. If you're not full, you won't splash. Be filled in the things of God. And if you're filled in the things of God, you can't help but splash. Splash. We're here to do a splash. We're here to make a splash on our society. Not to be the, we're, not, we're not here to, not to be seen. We don't want to be invisible. And we don't want to be so the same as culture that people look at us and say, well, what difference does it make? We want to live a life that attracts people to the kingdom of God because we're not strange, but we're different. We've got something around our lives that's not the same as them. It's a splash. The idea of a bomb dive is to make a bigger splash. Plan to live a life that splashes onto the people around you. Starts by being nice. Just being kind to people. You'd be surprised how powerful kindness is. They, they might know everything about you, but they'll know that you're kind. You know, I used to do RE in high school years and years ago when I lived at Noosa, and I met a number of those young people later in life. They don't remember a thing I said, but they remember me. They said, we remember you. You're the guy that was really kind to us. You looked out for us. Remember you? You got us out of detention sometimes by praying. I got one of the, it was great, I had this class, it was so ratty. They would sit there with their arms folded, not listen to me. And I could see the ringlet, a big guy, obviously he was the, 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 the chief guy of the class. And, and back in the day, you can't do this now. And I said, Look, I, come on out, I just want to pray for you. He stepped up, like, so I went and prayed for him. And the power of God hit him in his, in his seat. He went straight down to the ground. He was out there for about five minutes and, and he gets back and says, what was that? And I said, ah, oh, just me and God. He said, that was incredible. He turned around the class and said, everybody, listen. Everybody, listen. I remember a word I said. Be nice. Have an example to people. Have an example that people look at you and go, you know what? He's a little bit different. Not strange, but different. God's after fruit, not nuts. It's after fruit, peace and love and joy, not weirdos. <laughs> weirdos never attract anybody. People have the fruit of the Spirit attract people. They will know that you are my disciple by the love you have for one another. Not because you're weird with a placard on the streets. Not because you're yelling at me that hell's coming. No, because you've got the fruit of the Spirit happening. That's how it works. People get saved not because of, of the fire of God. The Bible says they get saved because of the grace of God. That's how they get saved, by the love of God leads them into salvation. Not, not you're gonna burn in hell. Invite people. Invite people to church. Invite people to your home. Invite people to your life group. No, not everybody will come. But it's never about the ones that don't come, it's about the one that does come. It's not about the ones that aren't ready. It's not our job to convince anybody of anything, but there are plenty ready. Jesus said the harvest is ripe. Our job is not to ripen the harvest. It's to reach out and find ripe harvest. They're ready to come. They're waiting for you to turn up and invite them to something. Some, not everybody will come. See, that's making a splash. You are empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a splash, to pray and believe. Acts chapter one, verse eight says this but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Brisbane, in Queensland, in Australia and to the end of the earth, which is New Zealand. <laughs> now I say that truthfully 
Because if you take a line from Jerusalem to New Zealand, it is as far as you can go. So to Jerusalem, New Zealand is the end of the earth. And it's like God said, speak to this mountain and it should be cast into the sea, New Zealand. <laughs> you should be my witnesses. You have the power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you have the power to be my witnesses, to power to love people that are unlovely, the power to care for people that shouldn't be cared for. The power to pray for the sick and see them healed. The power to trust the Holy Spirit to guide you throughout life. You have power now. It doesn't come from oneself. It comes from the Holy Spirit. You think of the splash Jesus made 2,000 years ago. And those ripples are still affecting the world today. We're here to do a bomb dive. Everybody remembers the man who says, I have a dream. Everybody remembers, man, it was a splash, it was a bomb dive. Not the man who said, oh, I've got a bit of a complaint. I was hurt at church. No, no, we're here to make a splash. And the last thing tonight, have a bigger heart. Proverbs 11, verse 25. The generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. The generous soul will be made rich. I, I, I think there is no other greater weapon against darkness than generosity. Care, give, make a difference. The bigger your heart is, the bigger you become. Generosity is the result of a big heart. And generosity changes lives and it changes futures. One of the most amazing incidents in the Old Testament is the story of Joseph. He was discarded by a very dysfunctional family. They, they tried to kill him, decided not to kill their brother, sold him into slavery. He was being bid on in an Egyptian slave market by rich people with the latest camels, furs and jewels. They, they were there bidding on the slaves. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you so much for this one, yeah. And yet the Bible says, this is what it says about Joseph. It says, there's a man that had everything, but he was naked, owned nothing. But God said, not, not the rich people with the camels and the jewels. He says, there's a man that has everything. There is, a, there is a wealthy man because wealth has got nothing to do with your external factors. It's something to do in your soul. It's something in here. You can't keep a generous person down. It doesn't matter what you do to them, they'll pop back up to the surface. And he was a generous person. You see, when he got bought by Potiphar, he served Potiphar so well, in a little time, he was running Potiphar's house. Generosity takes you to a position of influence and power. He was so attractive that Potiphar's wife looked at him and said, come on into the bedroom and fix my TV. And he stands up and says, yeah, look, thanks for the compliment. But I follow the true God. She is so mad at him. She yells, rape, Joseph raped me. And he was thrown again into jail because of an accusation that wasn't true because he's just trying to live the way that God told him to live. And in jail, you know what he did? He didn't grumble or complain about thrown in jail. You know what he did? He served the jailers. And in a short time, he's running the jail. You see, generosity in a person's soul, you can't keep that person down. They, they, they're gonna pop back. It doesn't matter what you put on them, they pop back up to the top. It's so well known, his generosity and his spiritual unction that the Pharaoh hears about it. And within a few short years, the person that was a slave with nothing ends up running as the Prime Minister of the greatest nation on the earth because of a generous spirit because of a generous soul, because he had a big heart. And years down the track, there's an incredible famine in Israel. The country is in drought, people are dying, there's no food left. They send a, an envoy down to Egypt to see if Egypt will give them any food. As a matter of fact, it's just not an envoy, it's his own family, the ones that have betrayed him, 
the ones that had cast him in the pit, the ones that had told him that they'd never wanted to see him again. They're the ones, they didn't recognise him. And again, at this moment, he could look at them and say, hey, we're sorry, all our giving's been done. But because he was a generous soul, because he had a big heart, he reached out and gave them enough food, not just to feed his family, but the nation of Israel. You can't keep a generous soul down. If you wanna become a bigger person, let God develop a bigger heart in you. Bigger hearts always live outside of themselves. You know, <laughs> well, you and I walk into every week this building, we just take for granted. But somebody paid for this. Somebody paid for every seat you're sitting on, every bit of carpet. When I got here, this building wasn't air conditioned. <laughs> it was hot in summer. It's cold in winter. We just walk in and take it for granted. We used to have bulletins back then before emails were available, church bulletins with all the details on them. But really, weren't, they weren't to read. They were to fan yourself because it was so hot in a stinking building. And I got here, I said, we can't do this. No one from the unchurched world, you're not gonna come, they're gonna die. You're not gonna bring your friends because you wanna keep them as your friends. You bring them here on Sunday, they're gonna end up a blob on the seat next to you with their eyes bugging out, just melted all over the place. They said, we gotta put in air conditioning. It's not for you, it's for the people that don't come. So I said, we need to receive an offering to start doing that. A guy saw me after the meeting, he said, Pastor Mark, he said, I'd like to pay for, the, pay for the air conditioning unit. And I thought he was just being involved. I was only here a week or so, I didn't know anybody. And I said, that's great, I'd love you to be involved. He said, no, I wanna pay for the air conditioning unit. Do you know how much an air conditioning unit is for a building this big? It's not $1,000 from Kmart or Harvey Norman. It was $700,000. And he wrote a check out to us for $700,000. And the reason you're in comfort today is because of that man's generosity. We just look at it and go, you know what? It's just what it is. Who knows $700,000 that could take you on a few nice holidays? A reasonable deposit for a house? And yet he saw beyond himself. He saw the need, if we're gonna reach unchurched people, we need to have air conditioning in this building. You see, generous people have big hearts. They see beyond themselves. And every time you go beyond yourself, you become a bigger person. That's why giving is so important in tithes and offerings, because when you do that, it stretches you. It's not about what do I get back? No, it's about who are you becoming? You're becoming a bigger person. And when you become a bigger person, you can do bigger things. We serve a big God. Let's become bigger people. Let's be ruined for normal, ruined for average, ruined for mediocre. Let's not live in those limitations, but in the possibility of who God is and what He can do in us and through us. Would you bow your heads close?